Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to another Sketch Sunday video. This week's sketch comes to you from My Favorite Things and you can see a drawing of it there and there will also be a link to it below in the more information section. So this week we are using a couple of different stamp sets. We're going to be using the My Favorite Things Some Bunny stamp set. We're going to be using that bunny and the bow as well as the Stamp Perfect stamp press because we're going to be doing a little bit of masking. So we want that bow to be on that bunny. So the first thing you want to do is whatever is in the foreground, you want to stamp that first. So we want to stamp the bow with my favorite things, black licorice hybrid ink. So I use the stamp press because I knew I needed to press to stamp it more than once. So there's the bow. And then I realized that I didn't put my magnets on there. So I do that pick the bow off and then put the bunny down with how I want it to look, making sure that the ears are lined up properly and it looks like the bunny was at, the bow was actually on the bunny the whole entire time and they weren't two separate pieces. So after I get the bunny into place, I'm going to take a mask that I had created, which actually I figure out in a minute that I lost, so I had to actually cut out another one. Um, and we're going to be using a very dried out Zig 2A glue pen. Once the Zig 2A glue pen is white like that, it is repositionable. So there, I took out and I've cut out a new bow and used the Zig 2A glue on the back of it and stuck it down onto the bow. That will just stick it down temporarily so that I can stamp on top of it so that it will look like the bow is in front of the bunny's ears. So putting the mask down, then going to ink up that bunny stamp in the exact same black hybrid, ink, black licorice hybrid ink from My Favorite Things. We're going to stamp it twice because when you have masks on there, a lot of times it won't give a real even stamp at first and you have to figure out where you need to do the, uh, to press it harder again for a better impression. So I, w I think I stamped this one three times because the shoes weren't stamping right. So this is where it's great to have a stamp tool. So after the bunny is stamped, I peel the mask off and you'll see the bunny, the bow looks like it's been on the bunny the whole entire time. Now, I forgot that I had some more stamping to do, so I put that to the side and I just use my heat gun to dry the ink because I'm going to be using alcohol-based markers on it and I don't want any smudging. So I actually realized that I should put that to the side and let the rest of it dry while we do the rest of our stamping. So I bring out the Stamp Perfect again and we're going to be using three sentiments from three different stamp sets. So the first one is the word Somebunny from the Somebunny stamp set from My Favorite Things. The last line we're going to be using is the Sending Hugs and Get Well Wishes from the Feel Better stamp set from My Favorite Things. And then the last one we're going to use, we're going to be just using the word is from that sentiment from You Bake Me Happy. It says life is short, lick the bowl. So we're going to be doing some selective inking. And so now I'm going to line up the first and the last lines and just make sure that there's enough room for the is in between. And just because it's a little bit easier, I'm going to ink up the first and the last lines together. So now the interior piece was cut out with a My Favorite things in and out stitched rectangles die, which we're also going to be using on the front of the card. And it's inked up with some My Favorite Things Purple Rain Hybrid ink. So I didn't get a good impression the first time, so we'll stamp it down again. And then I will get ready to do some selective inking with some washi tape. After these for the first and the last part of the sentiment stamp perfectly. I'm going to take those off and then I'm going to line up the word is where I want it to be underneath the um, and centered in between the two sentiments. And then we're going to take some washi tape and cover the life and short words of that sentiment up. And then we're going to ink up just the is in the same My Favorite Things Purple Rain Hybrid Ink. And after the is is inked up, we're going to take off the masks and then we're going to stamp it on the, on the, on the, um, sorry, on the cardstock so that it says somebody is wishing, uh, somebody is sending hugs and get well wishes. So there we go. And I only needed to do it once because it came out so good and my interior piece is done. So I will show you that in a second and then we'll move on to the next piece. So that's the interior for the card. And then that was pretty much all the stamping that we needed to do for this piece. So now we're gonna go into coloring. So I took some Copic markers and 
some other alcohol-based markers. But the first two that I used were Copics, and they're RV66 Raspberry, RV69 Peony. Then I used the hashtag coloring marker, R9. And then I used a Premier by Nicole marker in Cloud. And then I used the Premier by Nicole blender pen. So I put the cloud down. It's a very, very light gray, just where some of the shadow on the bunny would be. And then I took the blender pen and kind of smoothed that out so that the bunny will actually look white, not gray, once you do this. Now it's a little trick. It makes the bunnies actually look whiter by adding a little bit of gray. I know that sounds funny and you can see it on there, but it does make it stand out a little bit more. So the next thing we're going to do is take the RV69 and go over where the darkest parts of her dress would be. Underneath the collar, right around the pockets at the very end. And then RV66, we're going to go back in and color the rest of her dress in. R9 was used to color in the buttons, the pocket, and the little ruffle on her underneath her neck. Like I said, I didn't do very much coloring with this or shading. It was a very small image, so I just wanted to keep it pretty simple. The bow is also colored with RV69 in the middle, and then there's also a line on either side of the bow that was used, that I used that for. And then RV66, the raspberry, just finished the rest of her bow. And then she was pretty much done. I went back in with a Pilot V5 Precise pen and colored in the rest of her shoes. Her shoes didn't stamp all that well, so I knew I could go back in and use the Pilot pen to just make sure that it was done. So. I went and cut around the image and then I realized, that's when I realized I needed to color in her shoes so I took that pilot pen and then just colored them in. So after I finished that and the image was complete, I went with my scissors and my Fisker scissors and cut around, fussy cut around the image to cut it out. I don't have dyes for these ones. So I took a Studio G black marker and went around all of the edges just so that you didn't see the white cut line of the paper. If I didn't cut it properly, it um, you would be able to see the white edges. So now I'm taking a Copic marker in E93 and I'm going in and putting some on her cheeks and some on her ears just to give her a little bit of pink. Then I took my card base, which was four and a quarter by 11 and scored it at five and a half so that I had a top folding note card. And then these pieces were cut out from some My Favorite Things slope dies. So I wanted to cover the bottom of it with that, but I didn't want to put it on straight. That was too much of a slope. So I actually tilted the paper a little bit so that it covered everything and then cut off the excess pieces with my Fisker scissors. I went ahead and then did the exact same thing with the piece that's going to be on top of it. I, took, I had taken another piece of that same green cardstock and ran it through my cuddle bug with a different die. It has a little bit of a less of a slope on it so that it wasn't so drastic. Put that over top of it and then used my scissors to go ahead and cut out the rest of it. So then I put it on the top on top of the grass piece just to make sure that it was going to be okay. And then I took out some ink blending tools and some distress ink to ink up the back of it. I took out some tumbled glass and some salty ocean and covered the entire rest of the front piece where there was going to be sky. I went ahead and did the exact same thing with the piece that's going to be going on top of it. You see I used that um, little scrap piece of paper just to make sure that I didn't cover any of the edges or I didn't get any ink on the inside of the card. If the card wasn't folded exactly properly, you would be able to see some of that blue on the interior. So I started off with the tumbled ink, uh, tumbled glass ink and then came back in with the salty ocean. And then as we got lower, I, I came in with more of the tumbled glass. I wanted the top of the sky to look pretty dark, but then as, as it got closer to the bunny and closer to the grass, I wanted it to have a uh, more muted look. So I went ahead again and started with the tumbled glass. And I didn't show the rest of that, I'm sorry. Um, I figured you guys knew how to do ink blending, so I didn't show the rest of that piece. So I took some scrap white cardstock and took some clouds from My Favorite Things, and I don't remember where that little cloud die is from, I'm sorry about that. And I cut them out just because I thought the top looked too plain, and I wanted to place the clouds on there. So I took my Zig 2A glue pen and I put, I think it's five clouds. Yes, five clouds down, and glued them on with my Zig 2A glue pen, cut off the excess, 
And then I wanted to use my Martha Stewart Sparkle Texture Effect texture paste on top of it. It gives the clouds a fluffy look and it has some sparkle. This card is actually going to be for my niece. She's going in to get her uh, tubes in her ears in a couple of days and she loves bunnies and I just thought this would be super cute and she loves sparkles. So I thought this would be a great effect to use on this and I haven't used texture paste in a really long time. And what you do is you take a spatula and you actually it's kind of like, it looks like icing or frosting. It's used pretty much the same way. You just kind of mix it up a little bit, get enough on your spatula, and then just go and cover the image. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, and it actually looks like frosting when you're done. So it's pretty cool. So I did that to all of the clouds. I just used my spatula to, to move things around. Now for the little cards, it was a little difficult. If I had another tool, or for maybe a smaller tool, I probably should have used that. Because I got a little bit of, you know, some on the, the blue, which is fine because then the sky is also sparkly. But it was a little bit difficult for those teeny tiny clouds to make sure you got them all covered. Because it was either too much or not enough. I put a teeny tiny dot on there. So we're just going to do that until all the clouds are covered. When you do use texture paste, make sure that you clean off your spatula right after you use it. If it dries on there, it's not going to be good. If, uh, if you have it on a stencil, it won't come off after it's dried. So make sure you clean them right away. I actually took a baby wipe and wiped that off as soon as I was finished um, putting the, the texture paste on there. Make sure you close up your texture paste nice and tight so that it doesn't dry out also because it will. So that's pretty much it for the texture paste. I think it was something new that I haven't used in a while. Um, so I thought that I would put that on this card. So as you can see, I'm finishing up and then we're going to put the remaining parts back in there. You honestly don't use a lot when you use texture paste. This will last you a really long time. And then I cleaned my knife off with my hand and later on I'll go back in with a baby wipe. And I just wipe off the excess on the edges to make sure everything is good. And put that aside to dry and I want to get started working on the next piece. So that banner, I want to use some Distress Ink on. I'm just placing it on just to see how it looks. And I took out two colors of Distress Ink, and it would be Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. The Twisted Citron actually looked a lot like that color of cardstock that I have. If you can see, it looks very, very close to it. So I went over it with the over the edges with it and then softened it in the middle a little bit and then in a minute I will go back in with the mold lawn just to make the edges look a little bit darker and it also helps it stand out from the cardstock. Once I put it on I really like the way it looks. I think that it is very very similar to the color of the cardstock without actually using the same cardstock with just using the white. So that's what it looks like and then I will show you what it's what it goes on there looking like. See it looks very similar and then the green um, from the mode lawn makes it stand out. Now I tried to do a technique which I thought that I liked and then when I did it on this I didn't. This is a denim background stamp from My Favorite Things and I thought that I was going to make texture on the grass but I decided that it probably wasn't worth it and um, I didn't want to ruin the card because I figured I'd probably get it on <laughs> the, um, the blue background and then that would mess it up. So I can't obviously put the piece down right now because it is still wet. So I'm just going back in with some tumbled glass and filling in that last part, white part, before I, um, before I put the piece on. So I cut the word niece three times out of a die from Simon Says Stamp. And I had so much difficulty doing this. I don't know why. I don't usually have such a difficult time with this. But for some reason, they were not cooperating today. So I just put a little bit of Zig 2A glue pen on the top of each letter and then it's just supposed to layer on top of each other. But today, it was give, as you can see, it will give me a very, very hard time doing all of this. So I don't know what my problem was, but it just was not working for me today. And I think that the die cuts are so tiny and so fragile. I think they actually got twisted up a little bit and one was in front of the other. So I was getting very frustrated. It took me a lot longer to put these together than, than normal. So I'm sorry about that, that you're going to have to sit here and watch that. But once I have all three of the niece pieces together, I will use my Zig 2A glue pen on the back of it and put it on top of that banner. 
see, I'm having such a very difficult time and I was trying to unhook it and then hook it back on and I don't know, it just, it just did not want to work for me and they weren't lining up. And you'll see in the final card, they didn't line up exactly, but my niece is two and I know she doesn't care. She, um, she'll, she'll be fine. It's not, you know, it's handmade, it's not perfect and that's one of the things that we as card makers have to try to remember is that Handmade does not mean perfect, and I'm having a very difficult time <laughs> realizing that. So again, I will take the more Zig 2A glue pen and put it on the back of that and then stick it onto the banner like it shows in the, um, in the sketch for this week. So I'm getting ready to glue it down onto the front piece and then finish that front panel. So I'm going to take my ATG Oh, sorry, I'm gonna show it there. Um, I'm gonna take the bunny and I'm going to glue that down first. And I'll use my Zig 2A glue pen on the back of that. Just put a bunch of little dots on it just so that it sticks. And then I just make sure that the ears stick down because there is a little bit of um, depth behind, you know, the bunny's sitting on the grass and then it's sitting on the flat surface. So just make sure to press the top down so that it sticks. Now I'm taking my ATG and putting glue on the back of it so that I can hear the banner to the front of the piece. So there you go. There's the front piece all done. Now I touch the clouds and they are not dry. So I'm putting them over to the side to dry. But here I'm going to show you what I think is the final piece. And then I realize in a minute that it's not because I haven't showed you the inside. So I take the ATG gun and put some uh, glue on the back of it. And there was a little bit of a smudge inside, so I just covered that up. So just placing it on the inside and showing you what that looks like. And then put the front on. And it's not glued on. You know, I'm just holding it there. So that's what the card looks like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you soon. Bye!